Yeah. So Alvin, I mean, you're a big, big, big star in the 70s. Still a star now. How does it feel? Is this revival thing good for you, do you think? What do you mean, big in the 70s? I'm bigger now. You're bigger now than you were in the 70s? Of course I am. I'm just about ready to put my boots on, which will give me another eight inches. Oh, wow. And then, you see, you won't be able to argue with me then. <laughs> this is better than it was in the 70s. The Are those the highest you've ever put on? They are Except then. for the finale boots. And they're twice the height. Have you ever fallen over off of Don't the say things like that. <laughs> you're Is that tempting Na fate? You're a friend of Naomi Campbell, aren't you? I was talking to Les a little earlier, and he says he won't wear these platforms because his cartilage has gone in his knees. He's so funny. He's, <laughs> I tell you what, he's great fun to work with because every day he's a, he's a laugh. He comes up with something new every day. Have you ever had any problems with them um, wearing shoes as large as these? Not really, no. These they're quite actually you can actually move around in them quite well, you know. They're made by the original bootmaker that made my first boots in goodness, nineteen seventy-four. And um, he uh, I rang him up and said, well, I'm doing this show and I want to do a bit of a, a bit of a Mickey take. So I we pinched a bit of a bit of Gary and a bit of Slade and a bit of um, sweet mm. and a bit of adamant, and uh, we just uh, we're going for it, just for a bit of fun, you know. So uh, it's a good night because working with layers is great. Working with the glitter, gl the glitter band is fantastic. And uh, I've just got to find my rings now. These are the the famous rings. These are the original ones. You know that one is collapsing slightly. So the onyx is broken, but it's I just can't give it away or not use it. It's what does it feel like to memory. actually um, perform these songs that were so big in the 70s and, you know, obviously the audiences love them. Was it, was it better then or better now, do you think? It's different. I mean, the thing about now is that we're not being pressured by anybody to sell records like record companies and, and, and things like that. We just go out there and have a good time. I mean, I think Les put it in a nutshell the other day when we were being interviewed together and someone said, What's, what, how would you describe the night? And he said, it's a bloody good night out. And I said, yeah, for us as well as for the people, you know, so... So you still do it for fun more than anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what do you think about the fact that, you know, the 70s stuff They're watching is... here, do you realise? Sorry? I didn't realise you were there watching, sorry about that. <laughs> and what do you think Don't about Don't wobble the... the camera, that's not very professional. Go on. What do you think about the audiences that you get now? I mean, do you get sort of young people or do you get lots of very older sort of generations? I mean, what do you think of them? Do you I think, think they should sort of... Stop living in the past, or no? They're not living in the past. I think that almost the nostalgia is almost an out-of-date word now because there's so many things going on. I mean, they're even doing revivals from the 80s. Uh, it, soon they'll be doing revivals from 1991 or something. So, I mean, the 60s bands have got touring all the time, and uh, the 50s bands, and the 70s bands, and the 80s bands. Uh, it's just I think it's because I, I think the truth is, as adults, we're not nervous anymore to own up. To who our idols were, whose records we bought. I mean, if you were to tell the truth, whose records you bought when you were 17? When I was 17? Would you be a little bit embarrassed now in front of all your friends? Um, no, because I was so cool. <laughs> Everybody thinks they were there. There are a lot of people out there, you people out there, who would be a bit nervous about who or not you bought Donny Osmond records and um, David Cassidy records and Alvin Stardust records. And, but not anymore. Not, nobody cares anymore. They just want to have a good time. And which out of all the songs that you do is your favourite? Which has best memories for you? Oh, goodness. Uh, I think Pretend, in a way. Because I thought I'd done, uh, which was, uh, actually it was an 80s number, but I'd, I'd, I'd had a real good kick in the 70s as Alvin Stardust. And then when the 80s came along, I thought, maybe it's all over. Um, and then I signed with Stiff Records, which was Elvis Costello, Ian Dury, Madness. And I was in, in the same label as them, and it was just such a charge. Uh, uh, it just freaked me out. And the track we recorded was Pretend, so I suppose really... I mean, I love Cooker Chew and Jealous Mind and Red Dress and all the others, but um, that was kind of so magic, it sort of came and went. It's quite nice. It's nice now. I mean, what a Christmas present. 1974 was my first tour, 1994 just coming up to Christmas, it took exactly 20 years to the date. I'm touring rock and roll again, and 
Do you think you'll ever retire? After a while, I don't know. I... No. I mean, I can't think of a better job. It's not like working, really. It's, it's... Having fun? Yeah. And, I mean, you must just very briefly tell me, what happened when we heard that you were in hospital because of the fireworks in your show? What happened there? Well, it, it wasn't the fireworks. It was, um, I was, we'd been rehearsing for two days. And I hadn't eaten. I had a cup of tea and a slice of toast that day. We went on to the show. And I was dehydrated, overheated. And uh, I just I, I collapsed from heat exhaustion. But as I went down, it was about two thirds of the way through the show. The pyros went off, and the four explosions went off. And of course, from out front, it just looked like it was that that was what did it. But it, it wasn't. I actually just flaked out. I was I was actually unconscious for five hours. I hit my head on the floor, and uh, they put a pipe down my throat because I wasn't breathing properly and put me on a drip. And it was quite um, quite frightening. I mean, I didn't know what was going on, so it didn't worry me too much till afterwards. Uh, and then I was a bit a bit, um, a bit concerned. So do you have to look after yourself a little bit more this time round? I'll just eat breakfast, that's all. Bowl of porridge and I'm all right. I know you've got a dash off, but would you mind doing one thing for us? Because we're quite a new station, would you do I'm Alvin's Dynast and you're watching Channel One? Okay. Can you hold that and do it? Because then so we can get the advert in as well. <laughs> Any time? Any time, uh, okay. yeah, whenever you're ready. Hello, I'm Alvin Stardust eating this... No, sorry. This is Channel One. And I, well, this is Alvin Stardust. You know where I am. I'm on Channel One. Thank you. 